Hello everyone, good morning and a very warm welcome to all participants and jury members to the Abu Dhabi Startups Virtual Pitch Competition 2020. My name is Kritika and I will be your host for today's event. Let me first start off by saying thank you to all our participants for patiently waiting for today's competition. As we all know, AIM was originally scheduled to take place in March as a physical platform with the competition and it was since postponed due to COVID, the pandemic outbreak and the nationwide lockdown. On behalf of the co-organizers, Crypto Labs, we are pleased to welcome this partnership with AIM and the Ministry of Economy of the United Arab Emirates in our journey to discover disruptive companies and competitive solutions with the Abu Dhabi startup ecosystem. AIM, short for the Annual Investment Meeting, is the largest investment platform in the world. As an initiative of the UAE's Ministry of Economy, AIM has been promoting a healthier global economy by linking investment opportunities to fast-growing economies under several key pillars, namely foreign direct investment, foreign portfolio investment, small and medium enterprise, future cities, one belt and one road, a special event, and startups, which is our key focus for today. We are excited to listen to each of the eight shortlisted participants to showcase their company's products and solutions as they compete for a chance to represent Abu Dhabi at the final AIM 2020 Global Startups Champions League at AIM Digital, which will be taking place on October 20th till the 22nd. To basically officiate this competition, I would like to now welcome Mr. Mohammed Jamal Al Saadi, who is the director for ISDB Regional Hub. Mr. Mohammed, over to you. Good morning uh, to everybody. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope everybody can hear me. Uh, uh, Mr. Mohammed, could you please uh, put on your video as well? Sure. I'm trying, but somehow I don't know whether it's uh, from my side or. Yeah, okay. It's working now. Okay, so again, sorry about this. So good morning to everybody again, and salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, it's really an honor and a pleasure for me to join you in this beautiful morning. By the way, I'm calling you uh, from Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Today is our national uh, day. Despite that, I'm very excited to be with you today. Again, um, I'm, I'm uh, very thankful to the opportunity by the organizer, by AIM, by all the organizers, and uh, I'm happy to be with you today. Uh, thanks to the, uh, to the um, participants who have worked very hard to reach to this stage in the competition. I wish them all the best. I'm very excited also to, to, to know the result. I'm very excited to know about this creativity that they will be bringing. I wish also the jury uh, good luck in the selection. Uh, let me just share with you in a minute a small story. Almost 50 years ago, I think I was about eight or nine years of uh, uh, age. At that time, I was waiting every summer when I finished school to start my business. It was simply sitting outside of my house. My mother used to cook for me a chickpeas, so it was just only a small table, selling chickpeas uh, to the, uh, because I was living in Taif, it's a, a summer resort city in Saudi Arabia. So we expect lots of people coming in the summer to spend a good time in a very beautiful weather. So I had lots of customers, you know, buying, and then the supply was coming from my mother, who was my, my partner. 
And then it started with the sponsorship of my father who gave me five real at that time. I think maybe it's worth maybe 500 reals right now. So the business grew and then I started, next to that table, I had an ice cream table. So we were selling ice cream. It was a very good business. So I was targeting a niche, which is the summer visitors. I was sponsored by my father. I was in partnership with my mother. We made lots of uh, good money. At the same time, it was very exciting for me. So I was looking forward every summer for that for maybe three or four years. This is just a small example about, you know, starting up a business 50 years ago. I'm sure now creativity and innovation and technology has gone up. We're very happy to see innovations and lots of, um, I would say right now, good things happening, uh, technology, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, let me end by saying that uh, we all had been hit by COVID-19, unfortunately, very sad, we lost lives. Business has been disrupted and we're trying to recover. The whole world is trying to recover. However, during the COVID-19, I'm sure all of us, including you uh, with the creative mind, uh, I'm sure we discovered lots of startups, lots of opportunities that will be created with that crisis. So we always say when there is a difficulty, there is also an opportunity. So let me stop here again, uh, thanking the organizer, thanking AIM for giving me this opportunity to have this welcoming uh, speech. I wish all the contestants, the startups, all the best. Even those who don't make it to the final, you are great. You've uh, been here and I wish you all the best and thanks a lot again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mohammed, for those kind words and uh, we wish you all the best. So now before we begin, let me first introduce you to the jury panel for today's competition. The first jury that we have today is Mr. Hisham Zariq, who is the Chief Executive Officer and Board Member of Passport Capital. The second jury that we have today is Ms. Kelobogil Sepoti, who is Fellowship Program Officer at Entrepreneur, Entrepreneurial Leader. The third jury that we have today is Mr. Anaz Zedin, who is the Executive Director of Crypto Labs. To all the jury members, thank you so much for carving out time from your busy schedule to be a part of this competition. Before we hand over the floor to the first presenter, let us recap on the format and rules of the pitching competition. First, each startup will be given five minutes each for the, uh, for the pitch, followed by another five minutes for a Q&A session with our panel of juries. Second, uh, timekeeping for the five minutes pitch will be managed on screen via a chat box. However, please do, take note that the timekeeping for the five minutes Q&A session will also be managed via the chat box by the organizing team. As you know, on Zoom, we are only allowed to share one screen at a time. Third, kindly refrain from posting any messages, including promotion materials in the chat room, unless you're a jury member or a part of the organizing team. Both, in order to ensure minimal disruption throughout the competition, keep yourself on mute at all times unless you're the speaker. Fifth, scoring by the juries for each startup will take place right after each presentation and Q&A session. Jury members, as soon as you're done scoring the company, please post a message stating done in the chat room. Finally, the overall scores will be tallied at the end of the competition, followed by an announcement of the overall winner and the national champion during the closing segment of the competition. If any participants happen to come across any technical difficulties, please do refresh your web browser or log out and log back in again. Otherwise, please switch into another web browser. The webinar, this platform is also supported by uh, Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Microsoft Edge. All right, so let's begin with the competition. The first contestant that will be coming on stage is SPL that will be represented by Ms. Salva. Ms. Salva, are you ready with your uh, with your presentation? Uh, um, hi, Salam alaikum. Yes, I'm, I'm ready. I will just uh, share my screen now. Okay, great. So your time begins now. All the best. Um, hi everyone, my name is Selva Zahmi, founder of SPL Co. Uh, as you know, COVID-19 has put a huge pressure in a lot of organizations to accelerate their digital transformation strategy, particularly moving their system to the cloud. However, a lot of them, they fail to do that. And why? Because they still have an old legacy system that built an outdated programming language like Cobol insurance system and banking systems. 
And also, some of their software has been built by third party where the talent is not there, documentation for this, these systems is not available as well. Did you hear it what happened recently in New Jersey State where their insurance system wasn't able to accommodate the large number of unemployment requests that being submitted by the citizen to get the government support? And why they're not able to migrate it? Because it's built in COBOL system and it was very costly to migrate it. And here, where we have developed a software uh, uh, solution, which is actually an AI, um, uh, an AI based patent bending software, which is automatically reverse engineer the structure of this system and help to move to the cloud easily. What does it do? It extracts a very detailed architecture description of these systems and identify which is the part of this software that should move to the cloud. So it gives a programmer and project managers insight on, and the applicability of moving this software to, to the cloud, which part to move it, and it's give a very advanced visualization that helped me to do their assessment and analysis fastly. Currently, our solution has been is operational at British Telecom, who has been using it for this purpose of migrating some of their legacy system to go to the cloud. Also, we are about to close a commercial deal with Smart Dubai, and we was able to fight two patents for this technology. And we have also been won and internationally recognized by winning Global Telecommunication Award and being finalist in DevOps Excellency Award. Uh, and actually, this is our fruit fit uh, of uh, research work that we currently uh, supported by Khalifa University and Eftik Research Center. In terms of competition, one thing that makes us stand outside uh, 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 crowd, uh, outside out of the crowd, is that we able to load hundreds of thousands of lines of code, and we analyze them in a matter of minutes. That's actually provide more scalability and productivity compared to our competitors. So we able to reduce cost up to 30%. And that's why when we did actually the POC with the smart device, it took us only half a day to provide to them what value they can bring to their organization. The market for our solution is huge. The custom built software is a market is reached 200 billion. 15 billion is the annual spent in software transformations, particularly moving system to the cloud, because our systems is supporting currently um, a, a specific programming language was able to capture a market of obtainable markets up to 3 billion. Our business model is simple. It is software as a subscription model. We also provide a consultancy services as part of our uh, services to the customer who want to modernize their software. Currently, we are focusing in our UAE government sector because they are effectively moving to e-governments. And by doing that, they are depending on third party to develop their custom built software. And because of the increase of this volume of custom software, there was a need for such solution like us, that SPL, to help them to govern and having a covert control of this huge volume of custom built software in term in case if their uh, third party move outside of the bend uh, of the of the uh, uh, of the markets, we then plan to expand to MENA region and also globally by uh, by partnership with the consultants company to sell our uh, tool as part of their uh, service and international collaboration. Our team have more than 100 years of combined experience in ICT. Myself has more than 13 years in developing softwares and managing a lot of software projects at the same time in AI and deep learning. Also, my team had their PhD and MSc have we done it in the same area. And the team is really mixed up of multiple talents in software uh, and uh, ICTB, uh, IC project uh, management. And now is the investment opportunity for you. We are actually looking for funding that help us to expand our initial customer base, where actually we, we, we want around $400,000, and that will help us to uh, acquire eight customers and make a revenue. That revenue will help us to cover our cost for the first 12 months. And then we are planning to go for the second round of funding, 
on higher valuation for our company. And we have a very breakdown of where this, uh, the investment will gonna be spent. Mostly is gonna be in supporting the deployment of our uh, uh, solution in the customer side and uh, accommodate any customization required if needed. And, uh, and also support our sale and grow our uh, sale uh, uh, opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Salva. That was a great presentation. Um, and now I'd like to um, invite our panel of juries for the Q&A session. A gentle reminder, the Q&A session will only last for five minutes. Our organizers will be posting reminder messages in the chat as we approach the end of the five minutes allocated. So please be on the lookout for that. Um, jury members, are you on stage right now? Mr. Anas, Ms. Uh, Kel, uh, Kelly Bugil, and Mr. Hisham. Uh, Salva, you can start. You can stop showing your screen right now yes. and come on camera. Yes. All right. Are the jury members here? Yes, we are. Thank you. All right. Great. Yes, we are. Now begin uh, with your uh, questions. Uh, Mr. Mr. Hisham, would you like to begin with the first question? No, sorry. I mean, I, I just joined so i mean i wasn't able to join from the beginning so uh, uh i will have to pass right now because i mean i wasn't able to, to join this my, my question would be meaningless if she had explained them already no problems uh then we will proceed to miss uh, kelly bugel um you may proceed with the first question thank you so much so the first question i have for you and and really the presentation by the way i quite enjoyed um your presentation why is this so important to why is it so important for you to solve this problem? I come again. I didn't hear you well. So my question is, why is this problem important for you to solve? So what, what about this problem really speaks to you in such a way that you want to find a solution for it? Uh, why? Because uh, if because, you know, a lot of enterprises in uh, UA and abroad, they need to move their system to operate in the cloud. Otherwise, they will lose a lot of their market opportunity. And you can see that because of COVID-19, all system that is not really able to move to operate in the cloud, they're not able to scale and accommodate the system. That's why actually SPL with the best time uh, for it really to, uh, uh, to launch, to, uh, to grab these opportunities. And actually, it is a research that's been starting five years ago, and it is my area of interest. And uh, we've seen a lot of these issues with the experience with it, Salat and British Telecom. Um, do we have any other questions? Ms. Kelly Bukil, has she answered your question properly? Yes, I'm happy with that question. I do have a second question, if you don't mind me asking, or do you want to come to the next jury? Uh, come again. So I was asking, I do have a, a second question, or would yes. you like us to go to the next jury before I ask it? Yeah, you can go. I can ask me. Yeah. It's fine. Okay, perfect. So the next question is around your competitors. Do you mind just elaborating a little bit more in terms of what your competitors bring to the market? Um, I know you did touch on how you are different, which is great, but I just need a better understanding in terms of your competitors. What do they bring into the market? Uh, competitors, they are being in the, is not very close to our uh, way of how we design SPL just to support the migration to the cloud. The other competitors is more for software maintenance and they are building their solution uh, like based on technology, it is technology proprietary. Like for example, it would not scale if you have like thousands of line of projects that you want simultaneously to analyze them. Their, uh, their tool that is really limited to the project base where we are family for project in terms of scalability. This is the second first thing. Identifying the part of the software that should move to the cloud to the best of the, our, to this manage, we are the only unique part for our solution. And that's what we have been patenting. Uh, in terms of visualization, other, the other people also have it, but uh, we believe that our uh, uh, visualization, it's using the very latest technology where their technology had built in 2004. And those in the market has really been turned out. So we come with something very cutting edge and, and new in terms of technology and the way that we put uh, 
our engine. Uh -huh. All right, and actually, we got we got comment from British Telecom that we don't thought actually there is a solution available to help us to migrate to the cloud. Something like uh, uh, acknowledge that, and we did a very detailed um, a market study with assistance of yet two consultants in UK. We did that exercise for three months. We actually interviewed people from uh, NASA, Amazon, IoT, Smart Systems to see how this is product is needed. And they tell us actually the huge part of it that is still a pain point. Even there is some people uh, to, to they are using. Migrating to the cloud is one of the biggest uh, things and they are not able to see some solution for that. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right, great. Uh, do we have any other questions? We still have uh, two minutes left. Um, Mr. Anas, would you like to ask a question? Uh, yeah, hi there. Just a very quick question uh, in regards to, uh, so I understand about the competitive advantage, but uh, basically like what, you know, what, I know you've done some forecasting and then you've looked into the industry overall, but uh, what other sources of potential clients can you onboard and what necessary funding would be required to continue to sustain that? Uh, in the event that you're not able to fully monetize? Uh, actually, our type of customer is, uh, uh, we are actually B2B. So all okay. customer, they are doing custom build software. It is our, uh, our, uh, our customer, despite of the verticals. Usually telecom is our, uh, uh, is our current um, uh, entry for the markets, smart gover like government entities. Um, uh, it's uh, for us. It's really meeting with the CIO and those people senior inside the software. Mm -hmm. They will definitely assess the need for our solution. Uh, currently, even we have like three hundred thousand K fund we receive, like, and we are helping us to uh, acquire our first customer. For example, Smart Dubai that we are negotiating the commercial deal with them. Uh, that money that we actually at least we need around uh, two hundred thousand, uh, four hundred thousand dollar to uh, uh, just to back if there is a customization need. For example, we was approaching a government entity in Abu Dhabi who asked us that your solution is perfect for us. We will use it for some software solution that we have, but we need a parser for another language. Yeah, it's generic. It's about plugging multiple parser for C language, C++, or binary. Uh, uh, that's why we, when you when we are requesting for investment, actually you want the investment to support us to do this uh, additional implementation to support uh, other customers. And we got the same thing from the government entity who want actually Python parser to audit the software code that they are looking after and a third party is developing for them. Um, Ms. Salva? Yeah. Ms. Salva, sorry to cut you, but your time is up. Um, so we will now uh, have to... Uh, basically proceed. Um, okay, so now for uh, the movies, uh, we would now ask you to please proceed to uh, score the startups. Um, you uh, may drop a message in the chat room once you have done evaluating the startups. And yeah, so once all the juries are put in uh, done, only then we will proceed to the next startup. All right. So thank you very much, Salva. Great presentation and all the best. And thank you very much for all the feedback by the juries. You may now proceed. Thank you.
I hope you have uh, scored the startup because now we're going to be proceeding uh, to the next startup for today. The next startup that will be coming up today is from LT Energy, uh, Elisio Giliberti. Uh, Elisio, are you ready with your presentation? Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm ready. Okay. Uh, can you please also please do your, put your camera on? We would like to see some faces during the competition. Yes. Okay. Hello. Great. Great then. So your time begins now and all the best. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So hello, good morning and thank you uh, for being here. Uh, I am Alessio Giliberti, the CTO of, of, of LT Energy Group, and I will present uh, our solution uh, for lighting asset. Uh, the, uh, the market in this moment uh, is full of possibilities because uh, the smart city projects are really growing uh, exponentially. The public and uh, efficient uh, smart lighting solutions are going very uh, fast in the market. Digitalization is uh, going uh, actually uh, to an upper level and uh, uh, everyone knows uh, that, uh, that sustainability uh, is going uh, to the priority of our world. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, you already know that there is no real opportunities for uh, uh, B2B companies to save money on their lighting assets and uh, have uh, smart lighting uh, offers. And uh, uh, actually the offer uh, of the other vendors is oversized, uh, complex to use and very expensive. So uh, what we have uh, done is creating a new uh, product that uh, is named the Energy Light T and uh, uh, it's a little mm, controller that you can put uh, uh, for uh, mm, in, in uh, your company. Uh, it, it is uh, uh, actually designed on a business uh, or a beehive where you have uh, more uh, location and uh, uh, with the little uh, uh, places in order to have uh, the smart lighting. And the controller is very simple. Actually, is a motion sensor that you have uh, on, on your uh, current uh, uh, light. Uh, uh, the controller uh, that uh, is actually embedded in a single circuit and uh, uh, actually uh, you know, provides uh, the uh, efficient lighting uh, to the light. And then uh, actually uh, the remote control for analytics uh, uh, software and reporting uh, system. Uh, actually. Uh, uh, the benefits uh, of this uh, are, of course, uh, the energy saving, uh, the money saving, and the predictive maintenance uh, for uh, you know uh, all kind of drops that you can have uh, on the lines and short payback uh, period because uh, you uh, enter very fast in the investment. Uh, the this business model is very simple. Also, uh, you just take the hardware. Uh, we sell the hardware actually, and uh, we uh, we monitor the. Uh, all the systems uh, and uh, provide uh, everything to the customers. So uh, our uh, our actually revenue is uh, the one-time cost for the technology installation and a yearly subscription fee uh, for the report and that's also the thing that we, can, uh, we get from the customer. Uh, of course, the yearly subscription fee is a function of number of street lights or different location. Uh, the market is very, um, uh, uh, high and, and uh, has worth uh, seven thousand uh, seven hundred thousand dollars, and uh, um, uh, you know in Italy uh, there is a great market uh, uh, favor regulation, fiscal advantages, uh, and so on uh, in order to uh, have this market very uh, important uh, uh, and uh, growing. Uh, the competitors' landscape uh, is also um, you know, fragmented, but uh, actually. Uh, does not have uh, a solution just like this because uh, the tar market uh, target market is uh, always uh, uh, to government uh, and they're not uh, for or, or indoor just like interact but uh, uh, is not focused on the actual outdoor uh, B2B and the price is always high and uh, it's very expensive because uh, there is a software fee that uh, other vendors uh, give to the customers so the customer will, will never buy uh, actually the the product so uh, we focus actually on the um, uh, the uh, a little market uh, with a, a little location and, and uh, uh, we actually um, 
uh, uh, speak uh, with the, the decision maker of the uh, uh, of the companies. Um, the, our solution, as said, is very uh, is very simple compared to the others, uh, and uh, we already had. Uh, 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 a lot of uh, discussion with the facility managers that confirmed that asset lighting is very important uh, from their uh, factories. Uh, we are a team of, of uh, five people, and uh, I'm the CTO, and uh, I'm driving all, uh, all the company uh, with uh, our team. And uh, uh, actually, the, the product is already uh, quite completed, and uh, we're going to uh, accelerate in the next uh, months. Uh, the, uh, our uh, company is very already uh, uh, ready for the market, and we invest uh, with the uh, uh, you know the, the assets and the team implementation and marketing that will be required for uh, that uh, uh, for everything. Okay, uh, I finished. Thank you for uh, for listening to me. Thank you very much, Alicia. That was a great presentation. Unfortunately, we couldn't see you on screen. All we see is just uh, the color orange on your camera. But uh, okay, yeah, but, now <laughs> but now we're going to be proceeding for uh, the juries. Um, juries, are you? Uh, can we? Can I please have you on stage, Mr. Hisham, Mr. Anas, and yeah. uh, all right, Mr. Hisham, are you ready with the first question? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I have several questions. Is for what to allow them to control and measure what they are using there in their offices? No, we are also selling the hardware. The hardware is built from us, and uh, we uh, we send we sell uh, uh, the hardware, and uh, the, uh, the the software it, it remains to us. Uh, I mean, uh, the the monitoring, the operation part uh, uh, is ours, and uh, the customer uh, will will have not to. Uh, understand the complex uh, softwares. Uh, the customer uh, will not need uh, to have uh, some uh, technical uh, figure in uh, his uh, factory. Maybe he doesn't need it. Uh, uh, you you can uh, take, for example, uh, uh, a little uh, factory with uh, uh, some, uh, less than one uh, hundred uh, light uh, lightning points. It is uh, our market, so uh, it is a, a little. Um, uh, business uh, and uh, uh, you just uh, uh, buy the product uh, and uh, the, uh, with the initial fee and the subscription fee and uh, you do not uh, um, uh, think about uh, anything else uh, because uh, uh, everything is done uh, okay. by uh, Sorry for interruption, Alessio. Yes. Thank you. Sorry for interruption but because we don't have much time. Are you saving money for the company? So this is also something I didn't understand very well. Are you saving them money when when they when they buy your product? Are you I mean helping them save money? Yes, uh, uh, because of multiple factors that are uh, the actual actual predictive maintenance uh, that uh, uh, let you uh, use uh, your lights in a more efficient way uh, for first, and uh, then actually because of the uh, the fee that uh, is actually uh, limited uh, compared to the actual uh, usage and the actual uh, saving of the system itself, because the system itself uh, uh, is uh, efficient and uh, makes uh, save money by design. Okay, thank you. I will pass to the other jury questions, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hisham. Um, yes, Ms. Uh, Ms. Keller with you. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, the question I have just follows up from the answer that you, you gave now, which is around your infrastructure. So um, I wasn't too clear in terms of how much you actually charge for installations, as well as the uh, maintenance fees um, throughout. Um, and then secondly, most of your competitors seem to have the government as a um, customer and and you have a model that focuses on the businesses so it's a b2b kind of business is there a reason why most of the other competitors would would follow um, one particular route and is there actually a market for for you in terms of a b2b kind of business yes um thank you for the questions so, um actually 
uh, yes, the market uh, uh, is very growing. As you know, the smart lighting and the smart cities are something uh, that is about to uh, actually explode uh, uh, in order of market share and the products. Uh, we actually still uh, are not uh, um, uh, in the world. I mean, uh, uh, there is no so much offer. And so uh, everyone is concentrating on the largest uh, 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 market that is the government. This is the this is the reason why the first uh, um, uh, business model uh, is always from the competitor uh, is of course uh, um, uh, goes to the government because he has the largest areas and uh, um, uh, actually also the most difficult uh, uh, way of uh, creating a, 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 a need a company that. Uh, uh, can afford the actually uh, the actual cost, thinking that the cost is very high. But uh, with our solution, uh, actually, uh, that is uh, thought uh, uh, um, around the needs of the little customer. Uh, we can save. Uh, we can have um, a trade-off between the cost and the efficiency, and uh, do not, uh, we uh, do not have to uh, think on very big networks. Uh, just think about a city. A city is very spread, needs uh, uh, an infrastructure that is very different uh, of that uh, that uh, we are going to uh, implement uh, in a little customer uh, because of, uh, uh, of course, technical uh, uh, facts. So, uh, actually, uh, there are multiple reasons why um, uh, the, the market is very uh, uh, agile and now uh, is very uh, uh, open to new ideas, and uh, this idea is actually to concentrate on the uh, little business uh, uh, factory and the little business customers, uh, and not uh, the big one, the biggest ones uh, that uh, everyone can think of. I hope it will uh, answer everything. Yes, I do see that we are out of time. I just wanted to quickly find out about your costing. So how much do you charge for installation and how much do you charge for um, maintenance? Uh, yes, uh, actually this uh, is not uh, uh, yet uh, um, something that uh, we uh, are provided because uh, uh, the, um, the actual design is being uh, perfectioned uh, in the uh, next months. Uh, I mean that uh, we must, uh, uh, before uh, uh, adding the right, the actual cost, uh, we must uh, uh, think uh, about uh, the circuit implementation uh, and uh, the actual uh, cost uh, of the hardware, and then uh, uh, make uh, a, uh, a business plan. We already have it, but uh, uh, of course uh, we, we will have uh, uh, the effective cost that can uh, sell uh, after we have uh, uh, the, the first uh, proof of concept uh, that uh, we will make uh, in next June. All right, uh, Mr. Licio, your time is up and uh, we will now, and also thank you so much for your presentation and thank you uh, thank for you the again. feedback. Um, I will now request the juries to please go and evaluate uh, LT Energy. You have two minutes to evaluate um, the startup and then uh, please to put in done in the chat box once you've done scoring. Thank you very much, Elisio. Thank you too. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone.
All right, we are now going to be moving on to our next startup. The next startup, startup that will be coming on stage is Smart Navigation Systems, and this will be presented by Mr. Mustafa Al Hashmi. Um, Mr. Mustafa, are you here? Yes I'm, yes, I'm here. I'll share my screen. All right, that's great. All right. The floor is yours and all the best. Yeah, okay, sure. Just uh, let me know if you see my screen. Yes, here we go. Hey, yes. Yes, we can see your screen. We help organizations to uh, understand, to have better understanding using the satellite imagery. Hi, my name is Mustafa Al-Hashmi. I'm founder of Smart Navigation System. We have a product, Eagle Eye. The big data is uh, getting bigger because uh, part of it is from the satellite imagery that's uh, increasingly in daily basis, increasing in quality and quantity. It has a lot of information and knowledge. Once combined with the other data, it gives a lot of value. Our solution is the Eagle Eye, is a product that providing analysis and result of analysis of this satellite imagery to the government sectors. We have a dedicated team, expert platform, developing application, use cases oriented for the government authorities. So we give them the big understanding as a service out of the big data, enabling them to perform well in decision making and services. The local authorities are working in uh, citywide, like the municipalities, where the federal authorities, ministries working in the countrywide. Uh, we help them to be perform better and improve their services and the happiness index, covering different sectors according to the mandate of the local authorities, including environment, health, utilities marine economy and civil defense multi-sector. We already developed a use case, for example, the vegetation for agriculture, sand dune cover for the highway and the railway, the, the oil spill for the marine and the built up areas for the development, as well as uh, the disaster recovery for, for civil defense and homeland security. Uh, building update and building permit verification for the municipality and also monitoring the heat water from the power generation. We have a common methodology for all of those use cases uh, that uh, can be started from the image requirement, image rectification, filtering the cloud, reprocessing the image, getting the in, uh, image into the cloud processing using deep learning and AI, extracting the features, do the segmentation, converting to vector data, doing the chain detection and getting out the results and the reports and the understanding presented in portal or the database that, that a data can be uh, derived. We are building a platform that allows our customers from the government to see their use cases. The use case develops once, but utilize many, many ways and different locations. Presentation is put as a, a, a result of understanding and analysis. And the portal, the market size of this remote sensing is increasing to 38 billion by 2026. There are uh, around 200 authorities in UAE and 1,000 in the Gulf. And there are many uh, outside. We are looking at 5% of the market share. We will make the revenue mainly from the platform service subscription as per use, per the use case use, per space to also developing the template for the output in the map portal and we developing the algorithm and models for the use case to analyze that pixel, that wonderful information in the pixel size. So our story is the idea started early this year, and then we went to the competition of UA Space Agency, presenting this wonderful initiative. We became a winners out of four out 150 and three quarter three working into developing more than 10 use cases. We got the market validation. We built up the partnership with the stakeholders like MPRC, and other technology. This quarter, we already started now in the first important uh, use case, which is extracting the building from the satellite imagery for a base map update. And now in 2020, we will look at the other use cases prioritizing according to the impact and the readiness. 
We have a wonderful team, which is full time, led by me, quarter of century of experience with the government. Martian is with us here today, more than 40 years in relevant experience, full time, dedicated. Ahmed is our expert in the IT user interface and application. We have a wonderful AI expert, Ahmed Mohammed. So we also, we got a wonderful expert in the cloud solution architect, Ahmed Hussein, and we have a wonderful engineer in aerospace engineering. We are summing up more than 100 years of relevant local experience. We are asking our partners to participate with us with $70,000 that we will use it into the marketing and sales and operation, as well as into the development of the platform and the models and the algorithms. Uh, our runway is six months. We will uh, start selling after six months. We'll, then we will uh, break even after one year. And, uh, and, and we will make the, the sales and profit uh, growing up, starting locally, then expanding in the region and outside. So we invite you to join us to provide understanding from the satellite imagery analysis as a service so that we can add value to our country and to the world and help into overcoming the current medication. So we'll be glad to answer your questions and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mustafa. That was a great presentation. Um, the floor is now open for our jury. Um, Mr. Anas, would you like to ask the first question? Mr. Anas? I think uh, Mr. Anas is probably yeah, having... He's having some technical problems. I think he's gonna speak now. He has an issue with the microphone, I think. Okay, okay, okay. Then we can move on to the next jury until Mr. Anas comes back. Um, Mr. Hisham? Yeah, thank you. So thank you for the presentation. Um, uh, see, I mean, it's a very good thing, but what I still don't understand is that once you said, you said um, you have a platform, but at the same time you are saying understanding as a service. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand, what I understood is that a client comes to you uh, with the data and you try to figure out a way where you can help them analyze the data and use the output. And this is what you are referring to as use cases. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand that for correct. Yeah, correct. You are correct. Actually, we are working with our partner, Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center, and the government has a lot of has another receiving station. So the government is collecting a huge amount of satellite imagery. And now we are helping them as a bridge to help the government by analyzing this satellite imagery through the cloud processing, working with the government, looking at their mandate and developing that application for the use case oriented for that uh, client, that customer from the government. So we are, uh, yeah, the, the data Thank is available you. free from so my, the government. My question, uh, my question. Sorry, sorry, sorry for interruption. So my question is, how do you scale? If, if, if you have those cases and each government entity comes with a different question, then it seems to me that you will not be able to scale because each, as you already mentioned, you are addressing the aerospace, you are addressing agriculture. So agriculture ministry will come with a set of questions and you have to analyze. But I don't see how you are able to scale up the world because each client comes with a new problem and have to solve it for them. It's not like a scalable thing. And, and a, an essential thing for a startup is that a business should be scalable. Otherwise, it's, it's a small business. Yeah, because of our, exp our experience of quarter of century working with the government, we already collected about the commonly used 13 use cases and we validated this one. But we are having the capability to customize or come up with a, a model. We train the sets and satisfy any new uh, uh, use cases. But all of the city in the world almost manage in one way, in a similar way. Mm -hmm. And you also, another question that also um, is that you said that you wanted 28K for the development. Do you think that this is sufficient to build such a platform where you have AI training uh, and use that for all of these uh, uh, different uh, targets? It's, it's not our own solution for one thing. You are trying to address aerospace, agriculture, defense, uh, humanitarian crisis, etc. 
Yeah, that amount of development only for the runway, and we immediately will make sale and revenue, and then we will feed the revenue back again into the, the development to scale up. Always think big, start small, act quickly. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm done for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sasham. Uh, Ms. Kelly Bouguer? Thank you so much for that presentation. Um, the question I have is around the ask that you have for the seventy thousand um, dollars. I want to know what marketing plans do you guys have in place? So, what do you do in terms of your marketing plan? What is your plan around that? Yeah, our main plan is uh, we are already having the connection of the of the local authorities and federal authorities. And we will use our channels of digital media and meetings together. And also we are working under the umbrella of our data suppliers, uh, satellite imagery, because they we will help them to make the main return on investment of the government of the usage. So this is our marketing, uh, multiple approaches through the partners like uh, UA Space Agency and MPRC, because we are helping them to, and also we have already access because we are in the market locally here. I'm from UAE and we have uh, a lot of connection with, with the, all of the local authority because we belong to the same uh, you know, community. We were a solution consumer, now we are a solution provider. Okay, perfect. And so what are you hoping for with this marketing plan? Are you trying to build brand equity or are you trying to gain more customers along the line? Yeah, we will start with one successful use case, which is already starting the pilot of extracting the building because this is commonly used and we know that's demanded. Then the, this use cases will be uh, triggering the discussion very, already being verified. And then we will talk to the customers to fine tune the model for to fit exactly with their requirement. Okay, perfect. And my last question is around your, your fee structure as well. So how much would you charge, as an example, um, for somebody looking for these high pixelated images? Say it's yes. a head of land. Yeah, say for example, uh, Abu Dhabi or Dubai Municipal City wants to update the base map and verify the building construction versus the approval. So we will uh, give them as per the usage. So every scene of the satellite imagery covering 12 by 12, uh, kilometer, so we can easily measure that as per you know the space, the area, or the feature extracted. We want our customers to invest and pay as per use, and they should get value more than where they invest. Okay, all right. Thank you for that. Thank you very much, Juris. Um, I think we have only about 30 seconds left, and well, the time is up. So I would now request the juries to please go and score smart navigations. Uh, thank you very much, Mustafa. It was a great presentation, and all the best. And thank you also again, Juris, for the feedback. Now, uh, you. you basically have um, two minutes to go and evaluate the startup. Once you're done scoring the startup, please go and type in done in the chat box. Thank you very much.
All right, great. Thank you so much, uh, Julie. We will now move on to the next startup. The next startup that's coming is Sarsat Arabia, and this will be presented by Mr. Ahmed Al Zuberi. Uh, Mr. Ahmed, are you here? Yes, I'm here. All right, great. Uh, Can you please request you to put your camera on? Yes, yes. Uh, because the host has stopped me. Yeah. Oh, please. okay. Let me just fix that now for you. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's great. Uh, the floor is yours and all the best. Okay. Hi, my name is Ahmed, CEO of Sarsat Arabia, and we provide high resolution and continuous satellite imagery. So basically, my colleague Mustafa is a a company that process the data and our company is building satellites to provide him with raw data. So there is a need of continuous and systematic earth observation in many sectors to improve data driven decisions like agriculture, oil and gas and security and defense. So what we do in SARSAT is design and build a constellation of small SAR satellite and launch it into LEO. And by that, we can provide high resolution images data. So what's SAR? As you know, Earth is covered, covered by clouds most of the time. And SAR has the ability to see through clouds and over nighttime. And we feel that we are in good timing to launch a space startup because there's a growing need for data-driven decisions. The access to space is more affordable and the electronics is getting more powerful and cost efficient. The space sector is expected to reach 1 trillion by 2040, and the SAR business is expected to hit 7 billion by 2025. Well, there is SAR businesses around the world. We want to serve MENA and expand the rest, expand the rest of the world. We are perfectly aligned with UAE Space Agency National Strategy Plan and Midlib of Saudi Arabia. So because we are based in UAE in Saudi, we have a better main engagement for, for the customers. And by following low cost efficient tactics, we have the ability to provide competitive prices. And because of the technology that we have develop, developed, we have uh, uh, opportunity to provide high spatial and temporal, tempor temporal resolution. Our customers is two big segments, the end users who wants information on top of the data and the downstreamers, which is many of them use the raw data like smart navigation system. We are aiming to launch a demo mission by the end of 2021. And to do that, to do that we are focusing more on the payload design and we are performing in orbit tests with the GNC code. And guess what? We perfectly and successfully launched a demo mission through airborne test, and we have beautiful images, SAR images, and we are meeting the customers like Mustanada and Adafsa. And in parallel, we are launching a system architecture and downloading a perfectly images from Aquasar Lines for the test. We are grateful to our partners, UA Space Agency, and we will be, we were able to uh, secure a pre-seed grant from Takadam of uh, Kaust, and we have a partnership with MetaSensing. We are seeking more partnership. So our philosophy of the um, fundraising is using the, uh, the the fundraise to achieve a milestone, and that milestone will eligible us to go for the next round of investment. So uh, the Earth observation market is tough, and, and we think we should seek for the cash where the, we can serve them right away from our MVP. And while keeping improving that MVP and get another data images from satellite, we can serve the, the customer right away until our sensor or satellite in the orbit is ready, we can improve the web portal and launch imaging asking for that uh, purpose. So 
So our final product would be a constellation of small sun satellites. We believe that our team skill set is a good start and um, fully dedicated to this startup. Um, we have a perfect uh, <clears throat> uh, team members who worked in Boeing, Sari, and many space uh, uh, sector. One of our advisors is Mike Ings, a godfather of uh, SAR uh, uh, instrument and SAR business in South Africa. And also Mohammed Mubin and Prashant Marpur. This is our business development advisors from Airbus, CAX, OneWeb, and also Widia. We are grateful to our mentors from UAE Space Agency. And also what the most important thing about the investment, we seek an investment of 1 million US dollar. Most of it would go to the technology and logistics and business development. And we try to be accurate in, in that using COSIG tools. Thank you and help us to improve life on Earth. Thank you so much. All right, thank you very much, Ahmed. Uh, I will now open the floor for the juries to ask Q&A. Mr. Anas, would you like to ask the first question? Yes, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, can you hear me, by the way? Because I was having some issues with my mic. Yeah. Yes, we can. Um, so the first question, uh, just very quickly, in terms of the MVP that you have right now, are you relying on your own hardware or is it, uh, are you going to be capitalizing on the hardware of others uh, for this service? Yes. So um, we are focusing more on the payload design because the payload is what does the mission. And for the uh, uh, whole spacecraft or satellite, we will outsource the bus or the rest of the components that support the payload, which is perfectly tested and has the heritage, uh, like Surrey Satellite has the uh, uh, heritage of space flights of more than 20 years. So by focusing on the payload, it would uh, focus our resources, uh, team skill set to uh, uh, be perfect in the value add, uh, added, which is the SAR, uh, SAR payload. So uh, in short, we are focusing on the payload. We are relying to our uh, technology that we are developing in-house and by supporting uh, from our partners like MetaSensing and outsource the rest of the satellite, which is, which is, uh, has the heritage. heritage. Second question, if you don't mind, just very quickly in terms of the uh, Earth observation market, it seems to be very crowded and there's a lot of entities that have been involved in the sector, uh, you know, from the US and Europe and China and others. And so you're basically uh, competing with them. Uh, how are you exactly going to overcome that, irrespective of the funding that you get? I think your first round, you mentioned a million dollars. Yeah. That's going to be for the technology aspect of it. But by the time you get the funding and then you start developing that technology, um, how would you position yourself to have uh, gained some sort of advantage by then in comparison to all of the uh, competition that you have uh, globally? Yeah, uh, this is an uh, important question. So um, uh, we are focused to be an, uh, as a local provider for such sensitive uh, service, uh, especially for the uh, security and defense. Those type of customers who has, they have the well, let me say the big pockets, they tend to have the service provider inside their borders. And uh, we have been approached by them, not us, once we um, appeared in Shark Tank. Um, uh, they just call us and say, we have this. Could you help us in that? Uh, we said, OK, we are not ready, but we can help you that Iridium can help you. They say, OK, we're not, we don't need foreign uh, providers and that we understand that we can play very perfectly by enclosing and serving the local uh, security uh, customers um, by pitching to them that we are local providers and we can help you better than the, 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 the global ones this is what we are uh, positioning positioning ourselves that's why we call the, ourselves arabia to 
create emotional relationship with the customers. And then when we think that we have the ability to expand, we will expand globally. Thank you. Um, do we have any other questions? Um, Ms. Kelopagil? Okay, so mine was also just related to the competitor matrix, but I think they've answered some of the questions. It was more around what is the pricing around, or what are the price points of the competitors? Because you spoke about how um, you'll be coming in and be very competitive from a pricing perspective. Um, but yes. having just you know, given us a, a brief um, explanation around working in a particular area, which is your local area, I'm now curious to know, are your competitors, the ones that you've presented now, are they also local players or are these global players? Yeah, um, there is a technical uh, preposition that we can uh, compete in. You know, uh, with our MVP, uh, we can provide the customers who needs higher resolution, like let's say uh, 20 centimeter resolution. That 20 centimeter resolution cannot be afforded by satellite constellation like Planet Labs and all of these big giant companies, Lockheed and uh, Maxar. Uh, and that is because we have lower altitude. And uh, by serving uh, customers who need that extremely high resolution, we can compete because uh, we, we are available in that region and we can launch an imaging campaign and launch the airplane. For example, Musanada, Musanada, a company that needs to uh, make, um, uh, 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 try to, to, uh, to do a survey, uh, survey for the old buildings. And it, that application needs higher, higher resolution. And with that, we can, we can generate revenue out of that MVP. So in terms of resolution and the current situation, we can play in that. Field. Also in the expand, when we expand uh, and launch our demo mission, that expand technology can provide submeter resolution. And that submeter uh, is uh, uh, a way we can compete that, in that. All right, okay. thank you, Mr. Ahmed. Um, and also, I think uh, the time is up. Um, actually, I would like to inform the juries uh, the, that for due to technical difficulties, we will be scoring Sarsat Arabia in the end. Um, so for now, we will proceed to the next startup. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed, and thank you all juries for your feedback. You. Um, the next startup that will be coming up on stage is ACI Beard, uh, that will be presented by Mr. Tadashi. Uh, Mr. Tadashi, are you here? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, that's great. Uh, you, the floor is yours, and you may now proceed to present. Mm -hmm. So let me share my screen just a moment. Hi. Uh, by the way, our company name is uh, yes. uh, AC Biot instead of ACI Biot. There's something wrong on the mistyping. Okay, yeah, I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm uh, doing it right now, which is, which is. I think the, I can hear something. Mm -hmm. Can I start? Huh? Yes, can you can. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we can see your screen. Great. Um, so I'm Tadashi, co-founder and CEO of AC Biot. We have a chemical catalyst to tackle um, ocean plastic waste and also organic waste. As you know, the plastic waste is one of the biggest challenges at offshore and onshore, such as, for example, airlines, the buildings around the area. And there are three methods mainly to recycle plastic waste. Material, such as to make clothes or gloves, and thermal is burn the waste to make uh, to generate electricity or heat. And then the chemical recycling. The chemical recycling that we, we do, and it's start, stayed, still starting in the world right now. The problem is that a lot of waste, such as food waste or organic waste, are mixed with plastic. Therefore, it is quite difficult to separate them, clean them up, and mechanically recycle. So most of the waste go to incinerators, but it is then along with dioxin, greenhouse gas emission, tar, and that is quite expensive, CapEx and OPEX. It's cost hundreds of millions of US dollars to build and maintain these plants. On the other hand, chemical recycling is a decentralized solution. 
and it's much lower temperature, so lower capex and opex, and turn the waste into biofuels, uh, carbon or burning plastic materials, rather than sending all the way from one place to another. So we have already commercialized chemical catalyst, that is to carbonize organic waste mixed with, mixed with the plastic. So we don't need to separate between them. And we have a partner to make machines such as a mixer that can accept up to 24 tons per day. This is the, how, how the carbon looks like. The carbon is in the powder form. You can touch without any problem. So advantages we have compared with our competitors are mainly four in a nutshell. It's a decentralized solution. So uh, clients can save waste shipment cost because we can do on-site and also waste tipping fees. We can save the energy around 50% uh, because the lowest temperature of the reaction in the world. The reaction itself is zero greenhouse gas and zero dioxin, so it's eco-friendly solution. Last but not least, you can sell the carbon generated in powder form, for example, to chemical companies, uh, catalyst companies for several industrial purposes. So this is more details. Uh, we often get questions, for example, to compare with incinerator spiralysis or compost, which is like a biosystem. So in the greens are our advantages. So as I mentioned, we can do on-site, the low temperature in the world, as well as more efficient than compost or bioprocess of the waste treatment, because we can do around up to 24 tons per day and takes only a few hours to recycle. These are applications of the carbon generated from the waste. Uh, we can use, for example, as a biofuels for biomass a power plant or waste to energy. We can also make a bioplastics from the waste or activated carbon, which is the industrial product for uh, the industry and manufacturing. The market is growing on food waste or plastic waste treatment. It's going to be 19 billion US by 2026. So our business model is like an espresso coffee machine. That means we manufacture and sell the machines and the chemical catalyst. And because catalysts are consumable, uh, so you can buy as a subscription model. Potential clients are uh, waste management, food, real estate, like high rise buildings, municipalities, resorts, islands, and ships and more. So traction we have so far is that we have already commercialized our chemical catalyst and want to expand our business in, in, the, re in the region as well. We got several LOIs to, to, uh, for the business we are also collaborating with several universities, such as Osaka University um, in Japan. Uh, we got awarded by several uh, uh, prestigious organizations, such as Think Beyond the Plastic in the US, uh, Solar Impulse Foundation in Switzerland, and also University of Cambridge. So this, this is our last uh, slide. And the team, we have five members on, with a combine of 100 years in the industry. So I myself was work, used to work at the private equity in this field. And we have four engineers, um, Dr. Atsushi, Robert Fara, as, as well as Professor Nishiyama as an advisor. So we are looking for uh, expanding our business in the region and also in the world. And we have already raised 1 million US dollar on to, for R&D. Uh, thank you. Um, and I'm happy to ask you your questions. Thank you very much, Sadashi. That was a great presentation. Uh, I would now request our juries to come on stage. Um, Mr. Anas, would you like to proceed with the first question? The yeah, first question, just to make sure I understood correctly, you said you have already raised $1 million? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, have you deployed that capital? Have you put it to use yet? Uh, we are now using uh, for R&D and uh, business development of the chemical catalyst we have already commercialized. You have already commercialized? Our product, yes. We already sold to a food company in Japan as the okay. first client. Do you have it in your slides, just uh, like a sample of what the, that looks like again, just to make sure that I understand this uh, correctly? Mm -hmm. So our oh, products yeah. are the, the machines and chemical catalysts in powder form. So it looks like this. Um, it's a, within a 40 feet container size. And it's an on-site treatment of the waste. For example, just next to a factory 
or uh, within the commercial buildings, for example. So this is a commercialized machine already that uh, is in yes. use. How long does it take to process? Uh, if, I, if you put in waste, that's a combination mm -hmm. of you know, organic waste and plastics. How long does it take to separate? Uh, it takes only a few hours. It's very quick. Okay. Do we have any other questions, uh, Mr. Hisham? No, sorry, I mean, I, my connection is a little bit dropped, so I will be hearing more of the other questions. So I'll okay. ask another question, uh, if you don't mind, then. Uh, so what is the next plan now? Now that you already have this machine, it works, it processes, and you've proven it, what exactly are you going to be uh, using the capital for? Is it just to create more machine, develop more machines, or is it to expand it to something larger, something that is more industrial for larger uh, clients and stakeholders? Yes, uh, many for two uh, purposes. One is that uh, the business development of the products we have already commercialized. And the other is we have more ideas to improve efficiency of the recycling plastic waste and also lower, even lower temperature so that you can, we can save energy and also utilize for, for example, petrochemicals because we can create gases uh, from the plastic waste. Is the resultant just a pure, like a C4 carbon or is it some uh, other, uh, like is it pure carbon that is the end product? Um, around 98 or 7% are pure carbon. And the other the could be, yes, the other is can be filter, using a filter system to remove, uh, to make a pure carbon. So the, for example, if we process PVC, which has a chloride, we could have some chloride within the carbon. Okay. But uh, the, the, the important thing is that we do not create any CO or CO2 which is a greenhouse gas emission, because we create only nitrogen and water along with the carbon. Okay. All right, thank you for your question, Mr. Nas. Ms. Uh, Kelly Bukel, we have two minutes left. Do you have any questions? Yes, thank you so much. I'm more um, interested in your financials. So how much would your machine and the product be sold for and um, to break even, how many of those units would you have to sell? Yes, thank you for the question. Um, so our machine size is from 200 liters up to 24,000 liters. So the price range from 100,000 US dollar up to 1.3 million US dollar. And the break even point will be within three years according to our financial forecast and the payback period for the client is between four and seven years once they purchase this machine because they can save uh, shipment cost and the waste tipping fees. So the payback is, is not bad as in this field. All right, perfect. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. I don't have any other Thank questions. You. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, I think that's about it. Um, we can now proceed with the scoring the startup. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, Mr. Dashi. Uh, thank you for the presentation and thank you, juries, for the feedback. Um, yes. Juries, uh, you may now proceed to uh, score ACB odd first. We have now SARSOT that's reflecting in the portal. So once you've scored ACB odd, you can then proceed thank to you. score um, SARSOT Arabia as well. So we're going to give you a time window of about two and a half minutes. So please score. And once you're done scoring, please put in done in the chat box. Thank you very much.
now we're going to be proceeding to the next startup. I see that the juries have uh, scored both the startups, so thank you very much for that. The next startup that's going to be coming on stage is Company Egg, and this will be presented by Mr. Sean Rego. Uh, Mr. Sean, are you here? Mr. Sean? Okay, I do not see Mr. Sean here, so we will uh, skip to the next startup. Uh, so the next startup that's uh, going to be presenting instead is Inkai, and this will be presented by Mr. Hamad. Mr. Hamad? Mr. Hamad, are you here? Yes, I'm here. All right. Can that's you Yes, we can. And is uh, your camera on? Great, wonderful. So the stage is yours and all the best. Thank you. Chris, uh, please let me share my screen. Hello, everybody. I am Hamad Taneji, Emirati inventor. And my company is in Sky Green Tech, a newly established innovation company, and would like to introduce my innovative product, Dynamo VV, which is an advanced solar photovoltaic module developed for the aim of high productivity of solar energy, but at lower cost. Therefore, it will be a market changer and the design for the next generation of solar modules. Dynamo VV is designed to work for terrestrial applications as well as space applications. As you know, Many applications on Earth or in space are relying on the use of photovoltaic solar panels to generate electricity from sunlight to run their electrical equipment. In addition, it's very helpful in reduction of CO2 emissions, global warming, and their negative consequences on our planet. However, there are a few challenges facing the deployment, like high cost, especially in case of uh, using high efficiency solar cells, heat management, and heat dissipation. Heat increases degradation of solar system, shading and soiling, which reduce power production significantly. Dynamo BV can provide real solution to overcome these challenges by providing the following features. First, light traveling feature created by incorporating reflective strips to trap sunlight inside modules glasses. Hence, reduce the number of expensive solar cell use and in turn reduces overall cost up to 40%. Second dynamic response feature created by developing innovative cells connection architecture that makes solar panels self adaptive against internal and external impacts like soiling and shading, leading to increase in energy yield 20 to 30 percent more. Passive heat dissipation system to reduce operating temperature, reduce power losses, reduce degradation, and increase lifetime. Also, the system is applicable for use in space application. The solar uh, energy for capturing concept. A unique value proposition of the dynamic, dynamic BV module is that it can work with a static solar reflector or mirror since it can accept non uniform or uneven light concentration on its surface as sun is moving in sky. Due to its dynamic response feature and convert it to usable electrical energy, traditional solar module cannot do that. A static solar reflector help to boost power output by 50%. And once dynamic module and reflector sheet attached together, they can make full capturing of solar energy from the dedicated project. Therefore, they can be raised up and used as roof for many civil projects like greenhouses, warehouses, workshops, Therefore, future large-scale solar projects will be a combination of this application and can supply energy, clean energy as well as food and other communities to the community on Earth or maybe other planets. The cost of land and civil infrastructure will be shared between solar projects and civil projects. Therefore, the energy unit price per kilowatt hour will be or will it drop uh, up to 50% including the uh, extra boost from uh, solar reflector and the dynamic response feature. The, our target market and market size is, is also sharing the traditional photovoltaic project market, which is accounted for 120 billion in 2019, 
calculated annual growth rate four to five percent. We are focusing also on the emerging market like solar system for space applications for satellites and spacecraft. Also, solar system as a rooftop for electric vehicles and drones. Also, solar system as building material that can produce solar energy. The readiness uh, of technology for mass production prototype is made tested and innovative feature approved offer for production line is received invention is under patent process in this in some countries and this is the picture of the real prototype also the international uh, i received an international awards in 2020 one in the top summit in abu dhabi and and the work in progress with ua space agency and crypto labs we uh, managed to establish a new company in charge of research technology and innovation bar called in sky green tech we are in discussion of boarding the product on satellite to be launched by National Space Center, also explore incorporation of technology within Mars 2117 initiative with Mohammed Barash Space Center, explore production, producing the technology in the country with collaboration with Strata, also in uh, with academic collaboration with uh, Sharjah University for technology evaluation and uh, publishing scientific papers. Uh, the next step of raise fund of uh, four millions. US dollar for the following one third for the production line, one third of, for the production facility building, 7% for making testing and certification of products, 7% for pilot project as an applied showcase project for the customer. The conclusion, uh, okay, we are happy now to receive your question. Thank you very much, Mr. Hamad. Um, I would request uh, Mr. Anas, would you answer yes, uh, yes, thank you. Hamad, thank you for the uh, presentation. I just wanted to ask my first, I have a few questions. My first question is, at what stage are you currently right now? Because you went through the slides very quickly. I wasn't able to capture. What exactly do you have right now in terms of an MVP? Yeah, I can show you the sample, small sample of the product and show you the performance. It will be much uh, clear for you. This is a small sample of the product. We can see the the reflective strips and the uh, photovoltaic cells. And we can also apply the, I'll show the light trapping. This is the, um, with the red laser point. See the, the spot will be reflected to the right and to the left. It means that we have an internal uh, light concentration. Also, the reflective, uh, reflective strips, which is a metallic piece, can help to conduct uh, thermal energy from solar cell and radiate it uh, outside. Also, it will help me to uh, or it will improve the mechanical property of the solar panels and it'll give a better appearance and as well as it will reduce the cost because it is at the end the cheap material and also will help to uh, incorporate high efficiency solar cells uh, into uh, the solar panels and uh, bring it to the market on lower cost. Okay, thank you. Uh, my next point is, is not more of a question, it's more of a, just a general feedback about the, the product and that I think you have a very good product and you have a prototype and you have a working model. And I think this is a big achievement so far. In terms of, you mentioned that you're looking for a $4 million investment, correct? The next step. Yes, yes. Yeah. In, in my, uh, I mean, in my opinion, uh, you have a product, but I think the way that it's being articulated, it's not clear enough to the investor. So if you were to ask the investor and to pitch it in the same way that you pitched it to us, it would be very difficult to acquire because you have all of the information, but the way that you're positioning the business model, the way that you're positioning you know, the product for investment, uh, it's just a little bit difficult to grasp, to fully understand what exactly the product is uh, and what you're going to do with that amount. I would just work on that uh, aspect of it because, you know, from a technical standpoint, you know exactly what you're talking about and you have a product. So these are two big check marks. I think the, the part that's missing is just str streamlining the articulation part of what you're trying to present and what you're trying to convince the investor because it would be very difficult to uh, to get any money if if the investor doesn't clearly understand the roadmap that you're uh, building 
Yes, uh, this this uh, solution represents uh, ten years of work. It's not, so it's a few inventions. Few inventions are included in this project. So I cannot go deep in the technical details, but I can do it if there is more time for to. Uh, yeah. Explore. No, no. What I meant is actually the opposite. Is don't you don't need to go into the technical details. You need to talk more yeah. about the business aspect of how you're actually. Uh, you're going to sell this and how you're going to convince investors to put on board. So it's just more from a presentation perspective. I think just some tweaks are needed to make sure that the investors clearly understand both the technology and how you're going to put their investment to work. Yes, uh, because this is, a, I can say it is a, a new category with, uh, I'm putting myself out of the competition. So this is where, where the security is. That means you are investing in a new simple technology that might uh, change the market. So uh, and the high investment because I cannot produce it in, in another uh, production line. It will require a special production line so that I'm asking for full investment or high initial investment to start doing the business. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Anas. And uh, do we have, we just have another, just a one, just one more minute left actually. Do we have any other questions? Mr. Hisham, would you like to ask the last question maybe? Yeah. I would like to ask. Uh, I would like to ask. Again? He has, uh, has he just served any kind of US patents? This is very necessary to go worldwide. So again, I cannot hear that. Yes, I think we'll have to repeat Sam again. And we can give uh, another minute for that. So my question was actually, uh, Mr. Hisham is asking, uh, do you have a U.S. patent? This is very necessary if you would like to go global. Mr. Hamad? Yeah, um, I'm an inventor. I have uh, several inventions. I have received the uh, patent on other inventions, but this is a, a, a recent one, a new one, the latest one. So it is in the process. So I have the time to apply here. I, already, I have already applied in several countries, but I'm also would like to apply on United States on, on other countries at the same time. Thank you very much, Ahmad. Uh, Mr. Hisham, does that answer your question? Yes, somehow so, but uh, I mean, he should have a pending patent in the US, at least that, so I mean, he can apply for that quickly. And my next advice as well is try to think about the amount of money that you would like to raise. Four million is very high initially. If you just have a, even if, I mean, for, for example, for new technologies that are out there, you, you will increase much more the likelihood of you being able to raise the money if you lower it. So try please to change your plan. You think so please just, even if, I mean, for example, for new technologies that are out there, you, you will have to be able to raise money if you lower it. Okay, uh, we can re uh, remove the civil building uh, from the uh, budget. But however, we need to have a full uh, initial uh, cost for the production line. All right. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Hamad. Thank you very much, all the juries, for your feedback. Uh, great presentation, Hamad. I would now request all the juries to please go proceed, um, Mr. Hamad's startup. And once you're done uh, evaluating, please put in done in the chat box. Thank you very much, Mr. Hamad. Thank you very much.
All right, I would like to call on our last startup for the day. This is Key to Enable, and this will be presented by Mr. Jose. Uh, Mr. Jose, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Let me share my screen. All right, perfect. I will leave the stage now, and the stage is yours. All the best. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you very much. And denying people with disabilities their right to education has a lifelong impact on learning, achievement, and employment opportunities. What about their future? Will they work, thrive, or only apply for disability hiring quota? They are losing the chance to improve their skills in early childhood. It's not only one, two, or three problems. It affects an entire country. Humanity is losing the chance to know their potential. Dr. Maher, a well-known researcher, wrote, disability is a complex, dynamic, multidimensional challenge. In Saudi Arabia, very limited research has been conducted, and most of this is on disabled children. However, here in the UAE, they consider that people of determination represent an important segment of the community and want to include services and programs in the public policies of the government authorities to ensure their full inclusion in society. But I have good news for Saudi Arabia and UAE. Julia still cannot hold a pen, but she writes and is learning inside a regular classroom. Ahmad cannot say a word, but he can communicate and study. And everything started because of this man. He was born in cerebral palsy and graduated in computer science using this head pointer and came up with a great idea. Together with him, we developed KeyX, a keyboard that works with the combination of colors and symbols. So it enables people with physical, motor, and intellectual disabilities to communicate, learn, engage, and be self-sustainable in the future. It's a part of an all-in-one set of assistive tools that together with an educational platform, is radically rewriting their future and also make us a unique solution that welcomes other competitors of assistive technology to join us as providers or as partners. We improve the way teachers and healthcare professionals educate the children, virtually or in person. We fill the gap of educational platforms that do not work with hardware solutions in the market. Forget about their disabilities. With Kitchen Enable, we are improving their skills. Our solution helped Allison to publish his first book, and he cannot even hold a pen. It also made Marina go to university and graduate in journalism. Regina could not attend school when she was young, and now she has a Google certificate. But this is not only our humanitarian cause. It's a 22 billion market that grows every year. More than 15% of the population has some disability. In the UAE alone, we have thousands of students waiting for our solution. And if we go for only 10%, we are talking about a 30 million market for the next three years. In the MENA region, multiply this by 20. But are we profitable, scalable, and predictable as a social impact venture? Of course we are. Our revenue comes from direct sales plus monthly subscription plans that we call accessibility as a service. They vary from 200 to 2,000 dirhams per month, depending on the demand. Working with this model, we finished our year with more than 5,000 users 400 schools and 600K in revenue last year, bootstrapping there in Brazil. We can't manage what we can't measure. Our all-in-one solution collects data to improve customer satisfaction, scalability, and predictions for other assistive tools development to enhance their skills using artificial intelligence. It was possible because of our fantastic team with more than 200 years of experience in only that picture. I have been working in technology since 1981, always as, a, as an entrepreneur and had two exits in Brazil. Marcelo, William and Alexandre have been working in sales, technology and in the educational field for the past 20 years. Shweto Kumar, ex Mubadala Financials, joined us, uh, our team, two months ago. And here is our tech team. You name it, and they will build it. Of course, we have the woman power in our team. They are our inspiration. They ask, and we do. And we are asking for 600K to repeat the success we had in Brazil, but in a super fast way, because the solution is ready. And we just need to create more content in Arabic and build our EUA team. Although we, are read, we have read some traction here in the region. Uh, but let's tell the truth. Every competition should have Brazilians. And now you have Jose that is dedicating his life to this amazing community. 
We won first place in the global social venture competition, competing against 700 startups from all over the world, Special Olympics Innovation Challenge here in Abu Dhabi. And we are the actual winners of Jitec Supernova's Future Stars in Dubai. I want to thank AIM and the jury members for this amazing opportunity. The UAE refers to the people with the special needs of disability or disabilities as people of determination in recognition of their achievements in different fields and the importance for the economic development of a country. Together, we can make the future possible for all these kids and hope they will work inside our companies or also start their own entrepreneur journey. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jose. That was a very nice presentation. I will now request our juries to come on stage. Miss um, uh, Kelly Bugel, are you ready with your first question? Yes, thank you so much, Jose, for your presentation. Um, can you take us through the process around how your product actually works? Um, I think you touched on a few elements. So you spoke a little bit about AI, you spoke about um, it being an educational tool and so forth, but it's not very clear. Can you just take us through a process of how somebody would actually use the product? Yes, perfect. Actually, uh, this is TX, and it's one part of the assistive technology that we have. Actually, together with all this, we promote the possibility and we enable uh, children or people that has not physical or motor disability or, or have a, a physical or motor disability to be able to use technology because it works as a keyboard exactly the way that our keyboard works. So if you have a keyboard and a mouse that we have this in, the, uh, in our solution, you can do whatever they want. But uh, we also, uh, uh, welcome other assistive technology inside our key X, our keyboard. So we connect them to, to the keyboard. So uh, we attend mo almost 90% of all disabilities inside rehabilitation centers and schools because of that. So it's a complete set of assistive technology with uh, educational platform, okay? Okay, I think I'm still a little unclear. So is there a supporting software that they'd be reading off of and then they get prompted to select certain answers or how does it work exactly? Okay, uh, the hardware part, it enables people, for example, that sometimes can only blink an eye. So even if they blink this eye, we enable them to use technology, a computer, for example, okay, a laptop. Inside the laptop, we have a software and this educational platform that we have, we uh, teachers and healthcare professionals build tasks and activities for them. So they are able to communicate and also learn. They can engage, they can play, they can do what people without disabilities can do. You know, of course it works without software because it's like a keyboard, but with the educational platform, uh, we can do whatever they want. That's why we are inside rehabilitation centers and the schools. Okay, perfect. Just one last question then. So um, as they're using this keyboard, um, do the educators get some kind of report to find out how they performed and do you assist them with this? Or would the schools then need to just get somebody to interpret the kind of data that is being produced? This is our goal. Actually, we get data while they use because as we have the hardware, we can measure that development. And while we measure that development, we are building a data repository uh, of that. And of course, we also uh, have the reports for them so they can understand uh, what are the best other tasks and activities that they can um, uh, do to this child. We are working in, in, in an artificial intelligence uh, within the software for while they measure the development of uh, the last uh, um, a task, for example, they, uh, the software will propose another one. So uh, the teacher will only uh, get the report. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Kelly Bagel. Uh, Mr. Anas, do you have any questions? Uh, we yes. just have uh, two minutes left. Yes, okay. So Mr. Jose, just very quickly, I believe you mentioned that you've made already $600,000 in revenue. Yes. And you're going to be, uh, and you're asking for the next raise of $600,000, correct? That's it. Okay. Is this going to be sufficient for being able to uh, develop? Or don't you think you would require something in like the $1 to $2 million mark in terms of scaling up now that you're expanding into the Saudi market and others? Actually, 
this is a great question, but um, what we feel is, um, of course, uh, more money is very interesting, but as we have developed during this COVID time, uh, many other interesting things, and they are already ready there. We just need, for example, to build more Arabic content, and this is not so expensive. So um, uh, our uh, what we are going to do with this is uh, we are we will bring this to to the UAE and of course to Saudi Arabia, for example, and we will deploy. We will make workshops and we will uh, make pilots inside schools, for example, for one, two, three months because. This is happening in Brazil and it's working there in Brazil, but they don't know that this is working here. We have some uh, schools and rehabilitation centers, but it's not enough. We want to make a, a, a noise, you know, about this. And we have, and we understood uh, together with the financials that uh, 600K, it will be okay for the next, uh, at least six to seven months to put all this uh, working. Okay, uh, very good. Just one quick question then on that. You mentioned that you charge a subscription fee. So to the schools, do you sell them the device and then bill them a subscription fee? Or do you give the device and you just collect the subscription fee? All the business model that we constructed and is already working in Brazil, we have all the solution because we never know uh, what is the disability that we are going to find. So the school, they don't want to buy this, buy this, buy that and then we provide them with all the solution and we charge this fee. And if there is a person that um, needs we have a person, person, we can have this for them. Okay, so you give them the device and then you charge them the fee accordingly. Yes, You're actually it's like a rent. Device. Yes, inside the subscription model, we provide them with all the assistive technology, you know, because uh, what is happening, not only here, but in the United States also is that, uh, People from schools and rehabilitation centers, they, they, they buy many assistive technology. And what happens? It stays uh, without usage because they do not have, for example, an educational platform that can connect to this. So it's better if we provide everything. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much uh, for all the questions, Juris. The time is up. Thank you very much, Jose. That was a great presentation and all the best to you. And thank you for the feedback, Juris. We have now come to the end of the competition, so I would be requesting juries to please go and evaluate key to enable, and um, we will come back after two minutes once the evaluation is done, only for key to enable. Thank you very much.
Have all the juries um, finished uh, scoring the startup? Yes, you're done. Well, I'm done on my end. Okay, fine. Well, we have another startup that's actually come, that has joined us now, uh, Company Egg, that was initially supposed to be um, presenting before Mr. Hamad, he's here. Um, Mr. Sean, are you here? Yes, I am here. All right, perfect. Mr. Sean, you are now uh, welcome to present your uh, startup. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, can you guys see my presentation here? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Sean Rigo with Company Egg. Company Egg is a business search engine and premium no-code website builder. Venture capitalist Mark Andreessen famously said, software is eating the world. Uh, a follow-up to that is platforms are eating the world. Company Egg is a proprietary super platform which combines business directory, search engine, website builder, and e-commerce all in one platform. Winning even 1% of this market will create a billion dollar company. Company Egg has a freemium to premium SaaS business model. We publish key business data for more than 18 million US businesses. And we wish to publish this key business data for the UAE and GCC countries and eventually the entire world. There's an unrivaled opportunity in the Gulf. There's an extremely young, digital first, tech savvy population. And the UAE is within an eight hour flight of more than 4 billion people. Uh, SMEs are a dynamic force in the UAE and Gulf. As these countries transition and emphasize their non-petroleum economy, SMEs become more important. And every business, every SME needs a business listing and every SME needs a website. Uh, SMEs represent between 75 to 90 plus percent of the GDP of many of these countries. And in a post COVID world, it's even more important to have a strong online presence. SMEs are a vital part of the UAE economy, yet surprisingly, many SMEs do not have a website. There's an interesting Google statistic that says less than 50% of the world's SMEs do not have a website. There's a statistic here, uh, only 52% of the SMEs in Dubai have a website, and only 8% of the SMEs in Dubai have an e-commerce website. We're raising venture capital to build nocodewebsites.com, which is a premium no-code website builder, which will enable SME owners to quickly and easily build enterprise caliber small business website with no code required. We've analyzed data on more than 10 million websites on our platform with a data set of over 600 million web pages, and we've identified the key features that are required to build excellent websites in, in an easy to do method. 100% of the websites on our platform will be e-commerce enabled and accept all forms of payment, including credit cards and cryptocurrency. 
The company egg customer journey is as follows. We publish data in a search engine optimized fashion and all the world search engines, including Google, Bing, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, et cetera, find this content. And when consumers or business owners do searches, their listings show up. Um, they, they then have the opportunity to create a free listing and claim that free listing on our platform. We verify this data and at that point, we have them in our marketing funnel. Uh, to date, we've had 100,000 US business owners not only find, but also claim their listing on our platform. And we have an extremely scalable lead generation process. And we wish to replicate this in both the UAE and broader GCC. We have a world class team of uh, in house technologists. Um, my co founder, Mike Calverson, uh, helped grow one of the largest business directory websites on the internet and helped them achieve traffic of more than 100 million uh, page views per month of organic traffic. And our advisors uh, include, um, have, have had exits of, of more than $5 billion in the last five years in both US and UAE companies. Uh, we are company egg business search engine and no code websites. And I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you very much, Sean. That was a great presentation. Um, Jury, the floor is yours. Uh, Mr. Anas, would you like to shoot the first question? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Sean, for the presentation. My first question is, why would somebody use your platform as opposed to Google? What, what would convince me as an SME or a business owner or a company using your platform versus all of the substantial amount of data that's existing and uh, everyone already has access to? Incredible question. Um, I didn't emphasize this too much, but our platform is interesting in the sense that we are 100% ad free and we have zero reliance on ad tech. So, so the Google question, Google's obviously the 800 pound gorilla in the room. They compete in any vertical they want to. Uh, the business listings on our platform load in less than 600 milliseconds with 10 to 12 HTTP requests uh, with a page weight coming in of around five or 600 kilobytes for the interior listings on our site. If you compare that to a Google Places listing or a Google Local listing or a Yelp listing or any of the competitor business directories, you'll find a total page weight of two to three megabytes, uh, two to 300 HTTP requests, um, and several megabytes of JavaScript, sometimes more than 15 ad units on a single business listing. So the reason as a consumer doing business web searches, you'd use our platform is that it, it's extremely fast. If you're a business owner, you would claim your listing on our platform. Um, and, and mind you, we've had 100,000 SMEs in the US already claim and create platform listings on our platform. You would do that because you want to present clean, structured SME data for your business to the world on both our platform as well as in a highly search engine optimized way so that your structured business data can get indexed. And specifically, non using non-technical lingo, you want your phone to ring, you want people to visit your website, and you want to generate you know, inbound leads and, and traffic since Google and all of these other directories rely on, on ad tech, they're essentially monetizing all of this traffic for themselves. So the narrative from Google is pay us, we'll deliver you traffic. Uh, our narrative is we offer you a 100% ad free, free listing for no cost on our platform. So we honor the small business owner and we only need a very 
very small conversion of those people to our forthcoming website builder to generate um, a very stable long-term revenue. But even if you're not going to build a website on our no-code website platform, we're still committed to publishing all of the world's SMEs uh, in, a, in an ad-free fashion. And it's one more thing. It's important to note, since we are ad-free, ad blocking scripts and VPNs with DNS level ad blocking cannot block our content. Whereas if you're a using an ad blocking plugin on your browser or a VPN that does ad blocking, these ad units won't show up. So a lot of these directories now have a substantially crippled business model. And there's quite a bit of legislation around the world related to data privacy which is uh, deeply impacting ad tech and we're completely decoupled from ad tech. So we're actually amplified by this increased focus on privacy. Thanks, Sean. Um, I have a question around how you make money. So um, if I'm understanding your model correctly, you don't charge for any of the traffic or leads that are you know, coming through to the site. However, you do charge for websites. Is the website the only way that you're generating money? And how much would it cost for an SME to be able to um, use your services from that perspective? Yeah, so we we generate revenue now by building uh, websites for SMEs and we use the leads that our platform generates. Um, we are raising venture capital to build a tier one fully hosted premium website builder, similar to something like Wix or Squarespace or Shopify. So after that is built, instead of our team of designers building the websites, it will be a no code, low code experience, and it will be do it yourself website building. Um, the revenue that's generated by website builders is extremely attractive. There's a high degree of um, sticky reoccurring revenue because people are, you know, it's very hard to migrate and there's significant switching costs. So when you win a customer, um, they often stay for several years and that's supported. If you look at one of the breakout companies of this post COVID world, if you look at Shopify, they're now a 100 plus billion dollar company and they have approximately 1 million websites on their platform. So winning an, a very, very small, less than 0.0001% of our traffic converting into paid websites would, would make this a, a billion dollar project. So it's, um, again, we publish the data at scale and we serve it to the world with this ad-free experience, but we only need to capture a very small amount of this traffic to, to uh, generate recurring revenue. I think the time is up. Um, thank you very much, Sean. That was a great presentation. Thank you all juries for the questions and your feedback. I will now ask you to please go and evaluate Company Egg. Um, we will be evaluating it for two minutes and then we'll be back on in some time. Thank you so much. Thank you thank very you. much.
very much all startups and all the juries. Uh, we have now come to the end of the pitching session for today's competition. Allow us to take a quick break while our jury and organizers tally up the final overall scores for the competition. The overall winner and national champion for Abu Dhabi will be announced after the closing remarks uh, by the representative of our organizer. Of our organizer. Basically, we'll be giving you uh, the winner by the end of the tallying for the overall scores. So please stay tuned until the end of the event today. Um, juries, if you'd like to go and reevaluate your scores now, please feel free to do so. And we will come back in about two minutes exact. Thank you very much. I mean, scored all the startups. Yes, on my end, I have. All right, um, Mr. Anas. Yes, I'm all done with my scoring. All right, that's great then. I'd like to all to I'd like to inform you all as well as um, the startups that uh, you know the national winner from this competition will basically be guaranteed a complimentary participation at the AIM platform. What they basically get is a virtual exhibition kiosk. They'll get access to all the AIM digital features, and also they'll get access to having meetings with investors and the main competition. That's the AIM Global National Champions League which will be for a price of 50,000 USD. And this will be divided among top five startups, 10,000 each. Um, the startups have also been categorized on the basis of our five categories, that's social impact, climate and environment effect, cybersecurity and others, best of innovation and growth. And also another thing that we'd like to inform you that, you know, Let's say if a startup does not win also from uh, the pitch competition today, this will not be the end as we have another segment that, that's coming up for the startups that's called the Global Technopreneurs. And this competition has been completely conceptualized by Microsoft for startups. So startups, please feel free to join us for this competition as well. You will be, be, you'll be given the same benefits as a, a winner would get. And for any further details and inquiries, please, please feel free to drop us a message on the email IDs that will be provided on the AIM website. Um, I think we have our winner ready. Um, so we are now going to be calling all our uh, juries back on stage. Uh, Mr. Hisham, unfortunately, is watching the competition through our other platform, that's Events 10X. But for now, I'd like to welcome Ms. Uh, Kelly Bugel and Mr. Anas on stage. 
And now for the much awaited moment, overall, I think we had a very competitive pool of contestants today and all our participants were amazing in their own way. And they all have demonstrated their respective strengths and unique propositions in the sectors they operated. Without further ado, I would like to honor, uh, I would like to announce the winner for the Abu Dhabi chapter of the AIM Startups Virtual Pitch Competition. Drum roll, please. The winner for the Abu Dhabi Pitch Competition is Key to enable, Mr. Jose. Thank you. Uh, key to enable is the Abu Dhabi champion for the Abu Dhabi pitch competition. Congratulations, Mr. Jose. Would you like to say a few words? Of course. Uh, can you listen to me? Yes, we can. We can see you and we can hear you. This yeah. is amazing. This is fantastic. And it shows that we are in the right path because um, Working with people of determination, sometimes it's very difficult, but um, we have to do it. We cannot give up. It's, uh, it's something that uh, um, makes us work and wait for the other day, you know, because you, you see, you, you, you believe that they are there just waiting for the right technology at the right moment. And we want to be that. And thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jose, and congratulations again. And uh, with this, I would like to thank again all our juries and Mr. Mohammed Al Asadi for joining us today for the Abu Dhabi chapter of the AIM Virtual Pitch Competition. And uh, we would like to now, uh, and like I said, uh, Jose will now be representing Abu Dhabi at the AIM platform. Uh, with that in mind, uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. On behalf of the organizers, Crypto Labs, we would like to express our sincere gratitude and appreciation as well as um, to the Ministry of Economy to giving us this opportunity for organizing this competition today. The annual investment meeting is still scheduled to take place in the fourth quarter of this year, that is on October 20th till the 22nd. So please take note and join us at this digital platform. For any more updates and latest developments on the annual investment meeting, please stay tuned on www.aimcongress.com. For everyone's information, a replay of today's event will be made available on the annual investment meetings YouTube channel in due course. Thank you once again, everyone, and have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.